Hello, writers. Welcome to this week's Writer's Tool Shed for week six. Your words are found in this example story. The baby birds nestled together in their tree. The fuzz around them helped keep them warm, even though the cold lingered on and on. Bobo said, Mother's coming back. She's coming soon. Roro said, Don't be gullible. Mother's not coming back. Roro climbed out of the nest and onto a branch. It stuck out like a spike high over the ground. I'm going to fly, he said. I'm going to find mother. Roro flapped his puny wings. He coiled his muscles. No, Roro, you'll fall, Bobo cried. Roro jumped. Birds might try. They may not succeed. So our first word is nestle. It's a verb to draw close, to snuggle. This baby polar bear is nestled in its mother's arms. You can see it's so comfortable there. Um, if you're writing, when would you describe something as nestling or nestled? You see this a lot when you have something that's kind of like cupped inside of something else, surrounded on at least three sides um, by something else. So the, the polar bear is wrapped in the mother's arms. Um, and the verb nestled has this feeling of comfort, of security, and safety. Fuzz, it's a noun, a layer of fine hair or feathers. Um, you can see this clothing roller here is rolling across a fuzzy jacket and it's taking off a, the, a layer of fuzz that had um, accumulated on the jacket. If you're writing with it, you have these two similar words. There's fuzz, there's fur, fuzzy or furry. Uh, what's the difference? Fuzz is generally more um, uncertain what the thing is actually made of. Fuzz could be made out of uh, kind of like these very fine kind of linty things. It could be little hairs, little soft hairs. It could be, even be made out of feathers. Um, but fur is very specifically the hair of an animal. So you wouldn't say, oh, my shirt has this fur, layer of fur coming on it, but you would say a layer of fuzz coming off the shirt. Linger. Linger is a verb to stay around longer than expected, to hang around. So if you imagine people saying goodbye, if they don't really want to go or if they um, just feel like uh, hanging around longer, they would kind of say goodbye and then take a step and then take a step back, goodbye again, or they might find something else to talk about and they're lingering. Um, you can use this in a lot of different ways about like the weather, like the cold lingered on or any kind of abstract thing as well. Linger versus stay. Stay ha it has more certainty to it. If I'm staying, then, oh, I'm just not ha having this back and forth motion. I've decided to stay. But linger is kind of like half in and half out. I'm staying, but I'm also kind of going. Gullible easily tricked, will believe anything. You can see here, there's a gullibility test, one dollar. If he puts in the dollar, will he get anything from it? He will get his results of his gullibility test. He will, he is gullible because um, he believes that he should put a dollar into the machine. How would a gullible character act if you're writing a story? A gullible character might always be going around saying, really? And they're very, very innocent, very eager, very uh, willing to try anything. Last one is spike, a thin pointed piece of metal or wood or other material. You can see these spikes sticking up here, very sharp, very pointed, very long. Um, if you're writing with it, there's spike and there's a similar word thorn. What's the difference? A spike is generally made out of a uh, more, more man-made material. Like it could be made out of metal or it could be made out of plastic. It could be made out of uh, wood. But a thorn is specifically something that grows on a plant. A plant grows thorns. You wouldn't ever call um, some a, a thorn. You wouldn't ever call something made out of metal a thorn because it's not naturally grown in the wild. Okay, that's all for this week.